Spanish Digital Nomad Visa, Self-Employed versus Employed. Hello and welcome back to Spain Guru. Today, we're addressing a crucial decision for digital nomads eyeing Spain as their next base. Should you apply for the Digital Nomad Visa as a self-employed individual or an employed one? If there's flexibility to choose, understanding the implications of each route is key to making an informed decision. Let's start with the employed route. Particularly if you're from the UK, if you opt to remain an employee of a company, there are notable benefits. Firstly, you maintain all the perks of employment such as sick leave, holiday pay and job security. More interestingly, with the A1 form, UK residents can enjoy not having taxes withheld from their salary for up to two years. This means you could potentially save that money in a high interest account and pay it annually to the Spanish government. Plus you avoid the higher social security costs in Spain as you and your employer will continue to pay into the UK system. Now, let's talk about taxes. As an employee, you won't need to worry about the quarterly VAT tax filings that haunt the self-employed in Spain, also called autónomos. This could save you a considerable amount of time and stress, especially given the strict penalties for any oversight. Furthermore, if you qualify, you can apply for the Beckham Law, which offers a favorable tax regime for new residents. 24% flat tax rate, no need to disclose assets outside Spain, no taxes on income outside Spain, for example, something not available to the self-employed. However, it's not all smooth sailing. One downside is that the employed route only grants a two-year visa, as opposed to the three years for the self-employed, meaning you'll face the hassle and expense of renewing your visa sooner. And this is in the case self-employed are applying from within Spain that can get approvals from up to three years. Switching to the self-employed options or autonomo, the main appeal is the freedom it offers. You can manage your clients and workload as you see fit, which is ideal for those with entrepreneurial spirits or varied income sources. However, this comes with the responsibility of managing your own tax affairs in Spain, including quarterly returns and potentially complex dealings with Spanish tax authorities. For those from countries without a social security agreement that covers remote work, or when there is a social security agreement but it is simply not being applied, like the USA or Canada, the choice between employed and self-employed may hinge on different factors. Each scenario requires careful consideration of tax implications, income stability and personal circumstances. W2 workers from the USA have had ENB approvals but are very rare. In conclusion. While being employed seems to offer more benefits in terms of simplicity and potential tax advantages, this option is currently only available mostly to UK citizens with rare exceptions. Being self-employed offers greater flexibility and control over your work. Your choice should depend on your personal circumstances, the stability of your income and how you plan to integrate into the Spanish system. If you're planning to take this route, consulting with an immigration expert familiar with both your home countries and Spain's immigration and tax laws is advisable. This can ensure you fully understand the implications and and prepare accordingly. Oh, and one more thing. Apparently YouTube says you're gonna love watching this video right here. I think you should watch it.